Hi. Yes, it's beta voltaic battery time again. Ugh. Tech journalists, can you please stop getting excited about this sort of stuff? It's just absolute rubbish. Headlines everywhere, everyone flooded my inbox with links to this. Uh, Betavolt says his diamond nuclear battery can power devices for 50 years. Look at this thing. Oh, it's fantastic. China's Betavolt develops 50 year nuclear battery. Nuclear battery, Chinese firm aiming for mass market production. Betavolt successfully develops atomic energy battery for civilian use. A Chinese company unveils a revolutionary nuclear battery with 50 year lifespan. China based Betavolt develops nuclear battery for commercial applications. Betavolt achieves miniaturization of atomic batteries for 50 year autonomy. China's nuclear drone can fly forever without needing to land or power up. Beijing startup claims the dawn of nuclear batteries and the potential reshaping of the global economy. What's that you can smell in the headlines? <laughs> yeah. Bullshit. Where have we seen beta voltaics before? Oh, that's right, on the EEV blog. Debunk this thing three years ago, the nuclear diamond battery. And uh, just two months ago, well, it turns out the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission just uh, sued that company because uh, they were fraudulent and they admitted it. And well, apparently, um, yeah, that's Gonski. So the half-life of that company <laughs> is not as good as their nuclear diamond battery, that's for sure. And even seven years ago, I did this mailbag video, which I linked in, looking at a uh, nuclear tritium battery, which uses a tritium source. You can buy these little uh, things on eBay, and you put solar cells top and bottom, and you can generate a couple of microwatts. This one was sent in by a fellow YouTuber, Nerd Rage, and I saw if I could power like a little low power Casio calculator with it, and no, it couldn't. That requires like an order of magnitude more power. But anyway, beta voltaic batteries are, of course, a real thing. You've been able to buy them for a long time, but not really for cheap commercial applications. A company called City Labs here, they have been selling them for a long time, and they sell a 100 microwatt uh, unit here. And it's maybe a little bit bigger than this new uh, Chinese one, but it's uh, 2.4 volts at 52 microamps here, so not quite as good as this one uh, that this new Chinese company uh, startup is claiming, which is 3 volts at 100 microwatts uh, for 50 years. But yeah, these are a real thing. Thing. You've been able to buy them for decades. So let's have a quick look at the claims here. So I'll link in the articles if you want to uh, see them, and it just basically rehashes uh, all of the latest press release, which we'll take a look at. Um, in 2016, a new principle was introduced, which uses diamond layers doped with radioactive isotopes. In the case of the first attempt, carbon-14, the idea is to select an isotope that releases beta particles, which are essentially high-energy, high-speed electrons and positrons. When these are released, the diamond matrix acts as a semiconductor to generate an electric current. And that's what these things are. They're basically, um, they're They've got, an, in this particular case, they use an isotope of nickel uh, 63 here, and uh, and they have basically um, diode sheets in there. So, like, there's got shows like maybe three diodes in here in series or something, or however many they need to get up to the uh, three volts required. It's basically a low power shocky diode using the beta radiation released um, from the isotope in here of um, nickel 63 in here, and you sandwich them all together. So it's called the BV100, and it uses a single crystal diamond semiconductor layer with a thickness of 10 microns, each sandwich between a two micron layer of uh, nickel 63. Each one of these sandwiches can produce current, because they also can be stacked or linked like old-fashioned voltaic cells to four hundred hundreds of independent units that can work together to boost the current. So what this is is basically a low-power shocky diode that generates a current when the uh, radiation from the nickel 63 isotope um, hits it. And you've got to, uh, from my understanding, you've got to have like a really pure like diamond semiconductor structure. Any Im impurities or anything else in there really screws it up and drops the efficiency drastically. So I don't know how many layers they have in here this is just like a rendering I don't think it's actually three layers like that you wouldn't get the uh, voltage actually uh, required in that particular case but I don't know there might be you know dozens and dozens of layers inside this thing and you can get a three volt 100 microamp battery and that's their claim and I don't doubt it
and they claim it can produce 100 microwatts at 3 volts and presumably last for 50 years. I don't know about the uh, characteristic uh, response of it and how it uh, drops off at, how it drops off at the end of the 50 years because it's a half-life, basically. So, I don't know, it drops by half. And we don't know because the company doesn't release any characteristic data on this or prototype photos or anything. And according to the company, it's in pilot production with an eye on mass production. A larger 1 watt version is expected in 2025. Yeah. If the 100 microwatt version is 15 millimeters by 15 millimeters by 5 millimeters, how big is the 1 watt version going to be? Unless they can radically change their technology and miniaturize it even further by orders of magnitude, Nah, this uh, mythical one watt battery they may release in 2025, uh, yeah, nah, it's gonna be massive, even if they could do it. So like I said, you've been able to buy these batteries, basically a 100 microwatt beta voltaic battery from City Labs. you've been able to buy them forever, and they don't uh, release characteristic uh, curves for these, but once again, it'd be like a half-life thing, and these ones actually use tritium uh, instead of the nickel um, isotope, uh, just like I did, I used these uh, tritium vials over here, and tried to power my calculator with it, but I only got a microwatt, and because, so it uses a phosphor material like this, so that you got losses there, and then you've got to convert the light from the uh, phosphor using uh, amorphous solar cells on top so it uses a, a traditional solar cell approach but and you, you can do it but I only got like a microwatt two microwatts out of the thing so wasn't that great so nuclear batteries like this actually come in three different types, alpha, beta, and gamma, named after the radiation that they actually produce. And the alpha ones actually produce uh, helium uh, atoms, so they emit uh, helium atoms. And the beta voltaics, like we're talking about uh, here, they actually release electrons. Hence why you can use uh, PN semiconductor junctions to actually uh, do this. You can uh, do this yourself. Just break apart one of those ionizing smoke alarms and put it next to a large dye uh, transistor to put the emitter right on top of it and you might get a couple of microwatts out of the thing and bingo you've got a uh, beta voltaic uh, battery with a transistor and a smoke alarm ionizing uh, source and that's why because they release electrons are like this that's why uh, you can get these tritium vials like this and they have a phosphor coating on the outside because uh, tritium is a uh, beta emitter so when the electrons hit the phosphor like this they glow just like your regular uh, CRT and then you can convert that using a uh, solar cell and the third type is a gamma emitter which releases uh, photons and there's others like radioisotope thermal generators for example that actually uh, convert using heat so they use a Peltier device and they're used in the void Voyager space probes and other, you know, uh, space uh, probes and landers out there, they use these basically a nuclear uh, battery, but it just uses thermal, whereas this particular one uses a semiconductor junction made out of a diamond type uh, material in there because it's more better. -er. And there's just all those different ways to create one of these nuclear batteries, but these beta voltaics, yeah, they've they're been around for donkey's years. Nothing new here. <laughs> it's nothing to write home to your mum about. 100 microwatts, can already buy one. But this one, if you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. It's why they don't put prices on their website. And you probably can't buy them, buy them onesies, twosies. And this one's 100 millimeters by 38. So this new beta voltaic uh, one from this Chinese uh, startup, if you could buy it, because you can't buy it. They're just in like uh, the proto, like the pilot production phase. And let's check out their website here. It's actually uh, betavolt.tech. So it's actually uh, Beijing Beta Volt Technology is the uh, name of the country. I'll link it in down below. And um, they make uh, shocky diodes, go figure. And they make diamond semiconductor uh, converters. and. And um, here's where everyone got the uh, the infographic from here. And this is basically the best um, technical data they got on the website. There's no data sheet. There's no characteristic curves. There's no photos of prototypes. There's no anything. But if you can find something, link it in down below. I have not been able to find anything in relation to this. And they reckon uh, the energy density is 10 times more than uh, ternary lithium batteries. It can store th 33,300 megawatt hours. That's uh, density. Density. So, yeah, <laughs> I am your density. I'm your density. 
So what's the energy density of this thing? Well, 100 microwatts are output at uh, 3 volts, which is the same as a lithium uh, coin cell, times 24 hours, that's 2.4 milliwatt hours uh, for a day, times 365 days a year, that's 0.876 uh, watt hours for the year, multiplied by 50 years, you're talking 43.8 watt hours for a 50 year life, and well, that's not too shabby, of course. You know, in theory, right? And, and assuming it's a flat response and everything else, which we don't know, but let's just assume it is. Um, you know, these things have reasonable energy density. And if they can make this cheaply and sell it cheaply uh, to the uh, consumer commercial uh, market, then it has some niche applications, but it's still only 100 microwatts. And the thing is, how does this compare to a just a, a CR2032 or CR2050, which would be equivalent size of this thing, roughly, because a CR2050 battery like this is 20 millimeters diameter by 5 millimeters thick. That's what the 20 means, is the diameter, and the thickness is 5.0 millimeters, like that. So it's basically the same density. And uh, what's the density of a CR2050? Lithium coins, primary lithium coin cell battery. Well, at three volts at 350 milliamp hours, it's around about one watt hour capacity. And of course, we know that you can buy, for example, a Casio watch, really low power jobby that can run off one of these coin cells, even a smaller version of this with less energy density, can run for 10 years, basically the shelf life of the batteries. Okay, so one of these nuclear diamond batteries might have a hundred times the, in theory, 100 times the energy density of a coin cell like this, assuming that your product that you're putting it in lasts 50 years. When was the last time you had a product that lasts 50 years? Maybe, you know, an old HP calculator you still got going after, you know, it's on the original uh, set of <laughs> silver oxide batteries after 30, 40 years or something like that, maybe. But, you know, yeah. Okay, but once again, it depends on the price of this thing and whether or not they can actually produce it. They have not even produced. You can't buy it. You can't get the data sheet. But of course, this is all just traditional startup hype. Every startup does this. They uh, produce a uh, press release like this, and then they uh, give it to a lot of these uh, you know, marketing agencies, these press release agencies, which then gives it out uh, to the wider market. And then all of these blogs and everything else and every, uh, you know, wannabe tech website on the planet actually uh, picks up this thing and runs with it and oh this is marvelous disrupting technology even though well no it's not on the market yet no there's no technical detail on their website apart from their press release uh, uh, claims and who knows how far they're out from uh, production on this thing there's no pricing information whatsoever and it's like yeah nah yeah, nah. <laughs> okay. And it's only got limited applications in certain niche. Like I said, a one watt version of this, that'd be really cool. You could run a small little, uh, you know, drone or something forever in theory, if you had one watt output power, but how big's the battery? When this thing's 15 by 15 millimeters, it's hundred microwatts. Uh, you're talking the one watt version being 10,000 times the size and weight of this thing, if the energy density stays the same, which of course it will be, unless they've got some magic new uh, process technology that's orders and orders of magnitude more than what this one is, and this one's not even on the market yet. It's just ridiculous. And of course the company has to whack AI onto its <laughs> like front page here because, well, that's the wank word of uh, this decade, isn't it? AI. And um, yeah, so they're into, uh, like they make shocky uh, diodes as well, but looks of a diamond semi conductor converter. They're into carbon nanotubes. You know, every startup has to have carbon nanotubes and it has to have electrochemical uh, supercapacitors. Does it use graphene? Does it use graphene? <laughs> Let's have a look. No, no mention of graphene. I'm shocked. Um, allows the production of supercapacitors with capacitance up to 10,000 farads. Uh, could enable the next generation of energy storage devices. So yeah, they're into all these sorts of things. Jack of all trade, masters of none. They're hoping that one of their technologies here hits it off. They're into micro scalpels. What's that? Diamond scalpels. Okay because they're used to using, you know, they've got process technology for creating these diamond wafers, which I'm sure this is all totally legit. So they got, oh, we can spun off diamond scalpels. So it looks like they're just trying to spin off like a bunch of stuff, hoping that they hit it big. And, you know, look, okay, right, they might have something here with this nuclear uh, diamond battery if they can actually produce it. But once again, as always, I won't believe it unless I can buy it on DigiKey or Mouser. You know, I, uh, no. 
No, it's just, it's all just hype. They're only in the pilot production phase and there's no technical data whatsoever. So just write this one off just like all the others until you can actually buy it. So yeah, in theory, it might have like 50 to 100 times more the energy density than a CR2050 coin cell like this, but over the span of a year, it's only about 2.6 times uh, more. So if your product lasts for, you know, a year or five years or something like that, then because your product might not last longer than that for some uh, particular reason. I mean, there's just not that many applications out there for a 50 year battery. It's, not, it's nice if you can get it. Yeah, like if this thing comes out for like a couple of bucks, even, you know, tens of dollars or something like that. Like, yeah, okay, we got something. But yeah, call me when that actually happens. Until then, it's just a startup company with a press release and a lot of wanky marketing and no technical data or any other prototype or production information behind this thing at all. And the claims of like, oh yeah, we're going to produce a one watt version. Because when you read these press releases, they make you think that they're going to produce a one watt version like in only a couple of years in the same size. No, it's not going to be because the process technology is finite that they've got. So it, like, it's going to be like 10,000 times bigger than this. Maybe if they refine their process technology by an order of magnitude, an order of magnitude, in any process technology is yeah nah right even if they did that okay it's still a thousand times bigger than this for a one watt version so come on be realistic so that's always the problem with these sort of uh, startup press releases they go mad they've got oh new fodder for a new article and this is going to revolutionize everything and without knowing that no well you can already buy these things and well okay maybe they might be a bit cheaper in the future but it's still the same niche um, application for these things really so that's a yeah nah so please tech journalists just stop getting all excited over this sort of thing and think about it it just it never ends it never ends I could do a video every week or almost every day about a new tech product release taking a press release and running with it as if it's going to change the world it's not it's just, no, okay, so, okay, mm, good luck to uh, Beijing Beta Vault uh, technology. I hope it comes out. Send me a sample. Send me a sample, and I'll test it. Go for it, please. So, yeah, nah, this is not going to change the world. Call me when you can buy it for a couple of bucks. <laughs> Until then, I'll keep using my uh, primary lithium cells in my uh, low-power products. Thank you very much. So, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a big thumbs up. And as always, you discussed down below, if you've got any other technical information on this, um, please... <laughs> yeah, leave it a link in down below. And hey, Beta Vault, please send me a sample. Because I'd, I'd seriously, I would love to test it. But only when you've actually entered like production and you can actually buy these things. Because that's all that counts. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just yet another startup press release. Catch you next time.